Welcome back. In the last part of this uh, section, we're going to be talking about solving exponential equations or log equations, uh, where maybe it's got a little bit of a twist to it. And the twist is that it's something that's quadratic in form, where we might need to do a little bit of a substitution. Uh, so something like this equation, natural log of x, the whole thing is being squared, minus natural log of x equals zero. Uh, so we won't be able to get this as just one log equal to another because one of those logs is squared. So we won't be able to use one of those earlier techniques. But here we notice we've got a something and a something squared. That should be making us think of quadratic kinds of problems. If I were to let u be equal to natural log of x, then u squared would be natural log of x whole thing squared. So I would really have for this equation that it's u squared minus u equals 0. And that's easy enough to solve. I'd have either u is equal to 0 or u minus 1 is equal to 0, which tells me that u is equal to 1. Uh, the one complication here, of course, is if you're doing a substitution, you need to have remember to go backwards because once we find a value for u, we need to use that to find a value for x. So when I say that u is equal to 0, I'm really saying natural log of x is equal to 0, which is saying that e to the 0 equals x. So to go from natural log of x is equal to 0 to solving for x, I just rewrote it as an exponential equation base e, switching my inputs and outputs. So I have x is equal to e to the 0, which is 1. And same thing with the next one. If u is equal to 1, then natural log of x is equal to 1, or rewritten as an exponential equation, e to the 1 is equal to x. Now this was a log equation, so we really should check our solutions. So here on the side, I'm just going to quickly check both of these. I'll start with checking x being 1. The right side is 0, so I don't have anything to put in there. But on the left side, I have natural log of 1, whole thing squared, minus natural log of 1. One of the log properties that we learned before was for log of any base, log of 1 is always 0. So natural log of 1 is 0. So we have 0 squared minus 0, which is equal to 0, which is what we have on our right side. So left side is equal to right side, and I can feel happy about 1 being one of my solutions. And I'm going to do the same thing checking x is equal to e to the 1. I have on my left side natural log of e to the 1, whole thing squared, minus natural log of e to the 1. Um, so when I say natural log of e to the 1, remember that's log base e. So when I'm at looking at natural log of e to the 1, I'm asking myself, e to what power gives me e to the 1? And the answer is the power is 1. So really we have 1 squared minus 1. And 1 squared minus 1 is 0, which is what we have on the right side. So again, left side is equal to the right side. So it looks like both of our answers that we found, both 1 and e to the 1, are solutions to the equation that we've been given. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Um, again, we just have to make sure that we notice these things. We notice that it's something that's quadratic. This one was hopefully pretty obvious because you had a natural log and a, a natural log squared. Some questions, it might be a little less obvious. Like, for example, this one. We're taking a look at solving this problem. 4 to the x minus 6 times 2 to the x equals uh, minus 16 equals 0. Um, if we didn't have this uh, 6 times 2 to the x term, then we'd have one exponential function and a number and life would be good. Or if we didn't have the 16, we'd have one exponential function and another one, maybe we'd have some things that we could do there. But unfortunately, we've got these three terms. Some of them have exponential functions, some of them don't. And the exponential functions look like they've got different bases, which is also not the greatest thing to have. 
Um, so one thing we might notice here is as far as the exponential functions go, one of them is base 2 and one of them is base 4. But 4 could be written as a power of 2. 4 is 2 squared. So I could, if I felt like it, rewrite it like so. I could say it's really 2 squared to the x, which is the same thing as 2 to the 2x. But 2 to the 2x is the same thing as 2 to the x that's been squared. So if I wanted to be really clever about it, I could say actually what I have, that 4 to the x, which is the same thing as 2 to the 2 to the x, that's the same thing as 2 to the x that's being squared. And now I notice that I do have something that looks pretty quadratic. I have a constant term, I have a something, the 2 to the x, and that same something is being squared. So if I were to let u be equal to 2 to the x, then u squared would be 2 to the x that's been squared, which is my 2 to the 2x or 4 to the x that I originally had. So this equation could be turned into u squared minus 6u minus 16 equals 0. And that's easy enough to factor and solve. And so once you do that, you come up with two values for u. One of them is 8. One of them is negative 2. And then the only thing we'll need to do after that is to go backwards, to use our substitution and find out what is the value for x. u is the same thing as 2 to the x. So we'd have, instead of u being 8, 2 to the x is 8. Or we're asking ourselves, 2 to what power gives us 8? And in this case, the power is an easy one for us to figure out. If we know our powers, we would know that x is 3. Just as a little aside here, if this had been not a nice number, because we might not have had 8s in there, it might have been a 7 or a 6 or something less pleasant. So if you'd had something like a 7, where you'd be asking 2 to what power gives you 7, the answer would be found in the world of logarithms by rewriting this as a log base 2. So if we'd had a, a not nice number, we could still solve for what x is, just we'd have to do it by rewriting things as a logarithm. In this case, it's a nice number. 2 to what power gives us 8? The answer is the power is 3. Okay, next one up, we've got 2 to the x instead of u here, so 2 to the x is negative 2. And at this point, we should know that there's no solutions that are going to come from this equation for a couple of reasons. So the first one is, if we remember what the graph of 2 to the x looks like, the graph of 2 to the x would have a horizontal asymptote y equals 0, and it would taper off to it on the left and then get bigger on the far right. Uh, that graph of 2 to the x is never below the x-axis, so it never has a y value of negative 2. So that's what we're wondering here when we're asking ourselves 2 to the x equals negative 2. We're asking where on the graph of 2 to the x is the y value negative 2, and the answer is nowhere. Uh, the other reason why we should know that this has no solution is if you're thinking about a positive 2, no matter what power you put it to, you're never going to get a negative number coming out. So that's a second reason to notice why there should be no solutions. But even if you miss that, even if you miss the first reason and the second reason, if you tried to solve this equation and say, okay, I have exponential base 2, I'll rewrite it as log base 2, switching my inputs and outputs, at that point you should be really obvious that there's no solution because that's not a number. Log base 2 of negative 2 is undefined, so that means that you'd be getting no solutions from that second equation. So three different reasons for us to say for here that this has no solutions. So that means that the only value that we found, 3, must be our only solution to this equation. All right, one more. We've got a logarithmic equation, and this one is also easy to spot as being, exponent, uh, being quadratic in form. We've got a 6. We have a log base 3 of x. We've got another log base 3 of x that's being squared. Uh, so this one's pretty obvious that, yes, if you were to let u be log base 3 of x, 
then log base 3 of x squared would be u squared. And we'd have a nice little quadratic equation ready to be solved. And for this one, easy enough to factor and also easy enough to solve for u. So one value for u is negative 3. The other value for u is positive 2. And then, of course, we still need to go backwards. We need to rewrite this as log base 3 of x instead of u equals. So we need to say log base 3 of x is equal to negative 3 and log base 3 of x is equal to 2. And for both of these, solving is done by rewriting them as something exponential. So I would say instead of log base 3 of x, it would be 3 to the power of, and switch our inputs and our outputs. So I would have 3 to the negative 3 is equal to x, and 3 to the negative 3 is 1 over 3 cubed, or 1 over 27. And same thing with the log base 3 of x equals to 2. I'd rewrite this as something exponential with base 3. And switching my inputs and outputs, I'd have 3 squared equals x, or x equals 9. Of course, I'm not finished yet. So with this last problem, the one that we did previously, it was an exponential equation, which is why when I got my solution, I didn't bother checking it. I didn't need to. I mean, you certainly can, but you don't have to. Unfortunately, this is a logarithmic equation, which means once I find these two values for x, I need to check my solutions. So I'm going to do that on the side here. I'm going to check for the first one, the 1 27th. 1 27th, putting that in for x, I'd have on the left side... On the left side, we'd have log base 3 of 1 27th squared. Plus log base 3 of 1 27th. Uh, and I'm going to remind myself that 1 over 27 is the same thing as 3 to the power of negative 3. So I've got a log base 3 of 3 to the negative 3, whole thing squared, and a log base 3 of 3 to the negative 3. When we say log base 3 of 3 to the negative 3, we're asking ourselves, 3 to what power gives me 3 to the negative 3? And the answer is, the power is negative 3. So we really have negative 3 squared plus a negative 3. And that gives me 9 minus 3, which is 6. And that is the right side of my equation. So left side is equal to right side. Same sort of a thing when I'm checking x being 9. I'll say what well, we'll have on the left side log base 3 of 9 squared plus log base 3 of 9. And log base 3 of 9, 3 to what power gives us 9? The answer is the power is 2. So we'll have 2 squared plus 2, which is 4 plus 2, or 6, which is the same thing again as the right side of my equation. So it looks like both solutions work. Both 1 27th and 9 happen to be solutions to the original equation.